I am going to share a PowerPoint. And of course, when I do that, you lose opportunities to scroll around and look at your friends. So um, anyway, I'm very glad to be here today. I think that the topic at hand is crazy important right now. And we're starting to feel, you know, well, we've been really antsy about this for a long time, but we're starting to feel hopeful <laughs> and have some idea of what this is going to look like. And so I really, I, I hate that we have to do this on Zoom, and I'm also grateful that we have Zoom to do it um, on. And so um, I can't see everybody from where I am. So if you have something you want to say, unmute and talk to me, okay? Um, I'm going to, there'll be a couple of breakout things that we do today where uh, Sandy's going to put us in some small groups so you can have conversations. And um, let's see, we're recording this. What else do I want to know? What else do you want to know? Well, yeah, okay. I think we're good. So uh, with that said, I'm going to share my screen on purpose. Often I do this during rehearsals and I don't mean to do it because I meant to do a chat. Why is share screen the bright one? You know, uh, so am I screen sharing? Hey. Sort of, but not really. What is happening? Here we are. There we are. So let me give you guys a, a, whoops, you don't want my stickies. You want the PowerPoint. They're all right, right there together. So if you want to see more of your friends, on there's, you may be on a picture on the right side of your screen. If you click on that, you can kind of drag on the left side of that. You can drag that over and make it a little bit bigger so you can see more of your friends while you're talking. So yeah. I thought you know, aren't we trying to find our way over the mountains? <laughs> and and what a what a metaphor, you know, the, the rainbow is so important to all of us, uh, especially for you in uh, Region 13. I think you get a lot of rainbows up your way um, and the mountains and- Probably will. So walking on a rainbow trail, on a trail of song, all about you will be beauty. And there is a way out of every dark mist over a rainbow trail. So I thought that was fitting for where we are right now in our worlds. And uh, by the way, the other thing, I'm gonna send the PowerPoint to Sandy after this. So uh, you can take notes if you want to, but you'll also get the PowerPoint after we're done. You know, I was making changes on it right up to the second that I logged in. <laughs> so <laughs> didn't wanna go too soon on that. And uh, Paula did a, a great job of introducing me and I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that I wanted to add though is that I am a certified director. I directed for a little while in region five and learned a great deal from that. It was a fabulous experience. And uh, so I've had, I've worn a lot of different hats at the, at the chapter level too. Um, I was real involved in uh, the strategic planning process in my former course and in my current course. And so these kinds of conversations are really important and something that I have lots of conversations around all the time. So today, I know in this, the, the theme of this whole series has to do with leadership. And in particular, we're talking about change and transition and how do we go from here to there. And some of you may have seen this model before. It's the change cycle model. I, I like pictures like this. And you know, I, I taught a lot of classes using this model. Uh, and then along came COVID. And I thought, you know, change is, happens, to org, happens to people. It's organizations often creating change and it's happening to people. And um, this time COVID happened to all of us and it affected every single part of our lives. It wasn't just our chorus life. It wasn't just our work life. It wasn't you know, changes on um you know, uh, you know, maybe a school board or something like that. It was every single part of our life. We changed the way that we shop. We changed the way that we went to school. We changed the way that we didn't travel. Uh, we changed the way that we looked when we traveled, uh, all those kinds of things. So this is change is something that happens to people. This is a little different uh, perspective on this. Change happens too, but, but people transition. And so our job as leaders is to help people make successful transitions into whatever the future is. And, you know, if, if I'm leading an organization, I have a sense of what it's my, whatever change I'm going to implement is going to look like on the other end. But that hasn't happened with COVID. There was so much change. We, we don't know. 
what what it's going to look like. So it's hard for us as leaders to express what uh, the future uh, looks like. So it's hard to say, here's how to help people through the journey. But that's that's what our job is. And so uh, no doubt in the last year, we've spent a lot of time in crisis and in, in lots of different, in all parts of our lives. Um, so what I wanted to talk about for a little bit is differentiating between crisis leadership and crisis management. And so for much of today, oh, as this time that we spend together, I really want you to think in terms of being leaders and less about being managers. Those are both important roles uh, and, and we often are wearing both those hats at the same time. But for today, especially the early part of it, I really wanna focus on leadership. And leadership has to do with people. Uh, management has to do with issues and things that need done. So today I'd like first to dream. And so we're, we're gonna think primarily about people right now. Um, <laughs> William Bridges has this model that, that we came across and um, it's another picture. So left to right, endings over here on the left, this crazy neutral zone that, that we might be living in, and then clear over on the right, new beginnings. And in theory, you see the pink arrow going up through there, we just travel right up that arrow and all goes well as, as we transition through here. But um, I think, I feel like this is what we've actually done this year a whole lot of scrambling around and we, we run around and we, we keep wanting to go back to what we think now probably was an ending, right? It's not going to look the same when we go back. Whatever's in our future doesn't look like what we were doing. And so we circled around this a lot of times and we come up here and we play in this neutral zone and we go back down here and play in the endings again. Where we wanna get is into this new beginnings. And I know we've done a lot of playing here and I feel truly like we're hanging out right here on this edge and that we're going to head right into there very, very soon. Uh, the, the more we get uh, vaccinated and all those kinds of things, the more opportunity and hope that we have. And so I think sometimes this is an impression, an important thing to, to take a look at. And this neutral zone in here, uh, that's a great place for people to be crazy creative, right? It's a great time for people to uh, develop into what they need to become. It's a great time for people to renew themselves. And um, I, in a few minutes, I'm gonna invite you to think back on all the changes and the improvements and the, the new things that we have created as an organization in just the last year that outpaced probably much of the change that we've had for the last 10 or 15 or 20 years uh, in, in a lot of ways. And we did it because we had to. And we did it because we love this and we wanted to figure out how to continue to, to be engaged in it. So <clears throat> this is important, this neutral zone right here where we've been playing for the last little while. Um, so as leaders, again, what can we do while we're in this neutral zone? One of the things that we already have done is we've normalized it. We've said, this is the way that it is right now. And it's okay to be here. We can't be where we were because that requires being together and we can't do that right now. So it's okay to be where we are and to be thinking as we are today about what's in our future. So normalize it, say it's okay. Capitalize on the creativity. We've done that tremendously as an organization and it's been really fun to, to watch how people stepped up and stepped out and took on new challenges and just created new roles for themselves. To, st to be innovative, to say, what about, what if we could, to create temporary systems. And temporary systems would be things like, you know, we, we don't have a rehearsal hall right now, we have rehearsal Zoom. That, that's the way that that looks. And so we've created all kinds of things. Uh, we've, we've developed roles in our courses that didn't exist before uh, a year ago. We probably didn't have Zoom managers and Zoom teams in our, in our courses. And we figured out how to do that. And so good on us. Uh, that, that, has, that has shored up um, this, this incredible organization that we have allowed us to stay connected and together and seeing one another. 
Um, strengthening intragroup connections is another th important part of this neutral zone, and we've done that. We've found ways like this day right here. You know, we've found ways for all of us to be together and to be connected, and not only as choruses and as regions, but as an international organization. Suddenly things, travel didn't matter so much, right? We could go and do things that we hadn't been able to do before. So this is where we've been and where we're hopefully on the edge of getting uh, into whatever the next thing. So uh, another thing that I always think about, it's important sometimes to speak in metaphors. And so we aren't part of a sinking ship. Maybe we're rebuilding the ship as it sails through rough seas without a compass, right? <laughs> so I think that actually is where we've been <laughs> and we've been doing it well. I'm, I'm proud of us. So speak a metaphor as leaders that helps people uh, re recontextualize the conversation. So here's our first breakout, Sandy. <laughs> and um, here's the question, and then I'm gonna give you some, some responsibilities. What are some examples of new collaborations and creative solutions that we've seen in our organization since the pandemic? I'm talking about chorus level, regional level, international level, all kinds of collaborations and very many creative solutions. And so, uh, Sandy, I can see you, so not if I'm correct, okay? She's gonna break you into small groups of six or seven. And there are, how many people do we have logged in now, Sandy? We have 58. Okay, awesome. Okay, so here's your job. Um, the, the question, when you get to the other end, and we're gonna have about 20 minutes to, to talk about this because uh, that's more time than you need maybe, but I also want you to just spend time chatting with each other, okay? But every group, every small group needs to identify three different people. One is somebody to facilitate, to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to chat and, and gets their, their thoughts heard. Uh, a second role is sort of a recorder, somebody to say, here's what we talked about. And the third person would be what I would call a presenter. So when we come back together, I wanna make sure that you have an opportunity to share some of the conversations that you've had. And um, the way that we'll do that, I think is to use the chat feature, Sandy, and uh, also just unmute and talk. Okay, so I'll, I'll facilitate that when we come back. So um, 20 minutes, here's the question. Let me unshare so that you can see each other again. There we go. Hi, guys. Um, so there was your question, and you're going to have 20 minutes, and we come back, we're going to unmute or uh, use the share to, to uh, the chat piece to just Talk and tell us about this. Any questions? No? Okay, go have fun. Go say hi to your friends. Bye. <laughs> well, we're going to add time on the next one. Ooh, mm -hmm. while, while we have a minute waiting for everybody, can I just remind us all that when we're, unless you have a question or a comment, Stay on mute so that we don't have our pets or our family uh, turning on other electronic devices that we can hear. So thank you for that. Okay, back to Leslie. So did you have a good time? Yeah, okay. I know you're excited. I can, I can feel the excitement. Okay, so here's, here's a plan so that you can all plan. Uh, after we do this ne next little bit, which is sort of a report out, I'm gonna give you a little uh, uh, coffee break. Okay, a little 10 minute, go make more coffee and do whatever, recycle the coffee probably is in <laughs> many of our cases. <laughs> okay, so um, what I wanna do, I, because I wanna try to keep this next little piece down to like 15 or 20 minutes. I wanna hear from you. This is important, but I also want to make sure that we have time to get to the other stuff for the day. Okay, so uh, when you start hearing, yes, I already we already talked about that. We already so you don't need to say it again. Okay, just give me new stuff or the stuff that you're most excited about having heard. And so um, let's see, let's let's just do it by unmute whoever is wants to talk first. Unmute and start talking. I'll go ahead and go. This is Lou Ann. Um, 
Our team came up with uh, several things, virtual choirs, uh, projects were one of them, uh, being able to collaborate with other <clears throat> choruses on those as well. Um, people were doing creative things with drive-by visits uh, for celebrations and support of other members. Uh, a lot of vocal technique uh, education videos have become available. Uh, Kathleen Hansen was certainly mentioned, Donya Metzger, and there's been several others. Uh, one chorus is doing musical theory during rehearsals. Um, breakout rooms with activities that are allowing uh, members to get to know each other a little better, uh, better than they have uh, even in person. Um, some people have, a, have had additional time to uh, be more creative and grow as a musician and it's open doors for people to try different things. And then Zoom has just allowed us to be able to reach out across the globe and connect with uh, other uh, coaches and people to learn and uh, that we haven't really done before, so. Thank you, yes. I'll, I'll speak, I wanna just add, um, ditto to all the things we were saying, um, but also the fact that Zoom is probably gonna be a tool that we'll use, again, uh, continue to use, which is surprising, but, uh, and also some of the things that um, are happening in the small groups are things that they want, uh, I know my members want to duplicate in the live rehearsal. And so trying to figure out a way to do that. But when you talked about the virtual courses, um, I just wanted to make the point that it's collaboration across regions as well. There's some courses that have, you know, collaborated with other courses from other regions. And, um, and even collaboration with the non barbershop community as well, kind mm -hmm. of addition to that. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought there was one more thing. Uh, oh, just some of the different uh, creative things that have been happening with section leader, sectionals and things in the Zoom world. I'm not sure if we can duplicate that later, but I do a, a thing called um, section leader roulette, where my section leaders get thrown into a room with debate, like the tenor section leader with the bass sections, and she sings tenor while they sing bass. And then I flip it around and flip them again. She moves into another room, and so it's been kind of fun to come up with some creative things to do like that. So I'm to add those. Excellent, thank you. And community outreach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. We've used, um, we talked about the different ways we can use Zoom now to um, find different ways to celebrate and socialize and whether it's costumes or games or passing a glass of wine um, finding new ways to uh, be together and to make actually cement some friendships that we didn't get an opportunity to when people had to rush home after rehearsal and now they can actually stay online or come online early and we get a chance to talk to them. It's just been a, a fun thing. And there's been lots of folks who've, ri who've risen up into new leadership roles and new different kinds of leadership roles because <laughs> we've got new things to do. And so we've, um, and International's been able to take those things on and, and get, find new leaders and post this stuff on uh, YouTube. It's been great um, access for everybody. Excellent. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, again, ditto across the board. Um, in our group three, um, lots of shout outs for how steadfast attendance and sustaining membership has been. Sure, there have been maybe a couple um, members that have stepped away, but many of our groups have actually welcomed in and auditioned new members. So membership holding strong overall, um, loving all the educational, the guest presenters, guest coaches, the music theory that's been mentioned, music theater. So almost whole academies that can be structured, the cross collaboration and attending other chorus rehearsals, just zooming in and seeing how other choruses and their directors and their leadership are operating. Um, the virtual chorus, as well as making the videos, the virtual video. So taking that experience to the end with creating a video and how much we've all learned from that process. Um, learning more about our individual members, member spotlight, song star, whatever it might be called, but taking a little bit deeper dive into learning about our members and their passions beyond singing and their other ventures and hobbies and professions that you maybe don't always know about your individual members. 
uh, teamwork really stepping up. Um, and I think those are the main ones. Um, I could keep going. Our list was uh, pretty significant. We had a great time in our section. Excellent, thank you. Uh, we also actually talked about the financial benefits of Zoom, which <laughs> seems like a strange thing to say, but it's um, it saved us all money in travel costs. <clears throat> and while that may not be good for the hotel industry or the airline industry, um, it's been great for our pocketbooks in a time when things can be tight, so. We have Cherie with her hand up. Thank you. Um, so our group uh, pretty much touched on everything that we have already discussed, but a couple of things that I thought were fascinating, especially in the community outreach aspect was, of um, course, Bridger Mountain has recorded videos and made them available for senior centers to lift them up. And I think that that's a critical thing um, right now is, is reaching out to people that are so isolated and clearly the senior centers are, are one of them. Um, and then um, Harmony Northwest has did videograms for Valentine's. I thought that was a brilliant idea and they're doing working on um, birthday grams. And so I think that's another opportunity to, for community work and for just reaching out and, and touching people that may be experiencing some loneliness. So, um, and the rest is, you know, is pretty much what everyone has said, focusing on education and growing internally closer together. So, and I'm proud to say that the Coeur d'Alene Chorus, um, we also have not, only not lost a single member, we have also grown. So we're pretty proud of that. So thank you. Excellent. Anybody else? I have to give a shout out. We had a member of Jet Cities in our chorus and they, they pulled off their, um, their socially distanced social, um, which is just impressive all the way around. Um, and just, uh, we talked a little bit about people stepping up, people, people choosing to learn technology that they didn't already know, older folks who might've been intimidated, just hanging in there and, and learning new things because they, this is important to them. Um, and members of leadership having to think forward in new ways and create things that can draw people along and pull them into the future. One of we the didn't things have to cancel any. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Nancy. Okay. One of the things that I found really um, creative from a Columbia River chorus was they decided to collaborate with. Paul, and I believe, I didn't hear the last name, but I believe it's Paul Olguin, uh, writing a song uh, on the theme of coming back together. And in one of their rehearsal sessions, everybody in the chorus was invited to speak up, to give uh, wor word phrases, lyric phrases, or tag ideas, and left all of their ideas with Paul to pull it all together into a new song. Wow. That's exciting. Dale? Nope, you're not there yet, babe. We didn't have to cancel any rehearsals because of weather. <laughs> truth, <laughs> truth, truth. Let me see what happened down here in the chat. In, um a go back for our group three, we gave a real shout out to our regional leadership for the various classes um, that have been offered, uh, just huge. Uh, uh, last year's area schools, forgive me if it was labeled something else, but there were two of them. You could attend both, many of us did. And, and, and then topic specific sessions, um, the Saturday morning Zooms that were, you know, that helped knit us together. So thank you, thank you, thank you to our regional leadership for all you've done. So, and on a chorus level, this was brought up, um, having fun theme nights, whether it's Valentine's or the Christmas party, people were creative with their backgrounds, fun hats, a hat party, their clothes, wearing boas, maybe a special beverage. So just even though it's over Zoom and everybody's tile is, you know, two by two or whatever, it still felt like a party. 
Um, I, wa I want to give a shout out to um, our international uh, efforts around education. We had that included in our, our discussion. Uh, we we're just kind of overwhelmed at the volume of educational opportunities that we are receiving at both the international and the regional levels. Um, well, this is a little different, but I just made me think about it. At, um, I, we've had the opportunity now, which we probably did before, but we didn't even think, think about it. And Zoom has forced us to think about it, but the International Board has been able to meet with regions, you know, uh, particular board members assigned to certain regions. And so there develops a closer relationship between the regions and the International Board board level that we haven't had in a very, very long time. So that's been a real big benefit. Carrie Flint, did you have something? I did. Deborah said one of the things I was going to say. Um, but the other thing is um, one of our group members has, has taken the advantage of being able to view the like YouTube and explore more of the different genres and stuff and present those to the chorus and and that's something that they normally wouldn't have done so that's that's something that we normally wouldn't maybe do so that that's been kind of one of the things that this has been able to allow to step back and and look at some of new music in different ways sue back don't give yep. up on me yet. <laughs> and along the same lines, I was just thinking that as the last two or three people were talking, uh, I have become an on demand person. Uh, I do everything by on demand. I don't watch commercials or watch any network network TV or any <laughs> stuff like that. I don't have to have a schedule to do all this stuff. I don't have to have a schedule to learn it. I can do it whenever I feel like it. And that's a better venue for me because I'm a lot more likely to learn when I'm really tuned in. Oh, that would be fun to learn. That's fun. And then go back and watch some videos and have some memories and all that kind of stuff. So it for me, it's been... Uh, the saddest and happiest part, the saddest and happiest, really, because I really miss singing with people. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to add that my group also talked about the Barbershop Harmony Society, their, their um, midwinter that they did with the avatars. Very creative. Very creative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, last chance. Okay, so you know what, guys? I'm proud of us. Really, really, really proud of us. Listen to this long, long list of things that happened. And, um, you know, one of the things that came up in the small group I was in was, you know, it was just, just a little over a year ago that, or less than a year ago, that we were in full on panic mode. And uh, I, I think I speak especially for directors <laughs> in this regard, full on panic. Somebody said, this is not what I was trained to do. This is not the way that I know how to operate. And so the, the, uh, the rallying of the troops, the way that our leadership stepped around, the way that we were able to readjust and think differently in, in a time that was so challenging in all parts of our world. I mean, and so the fear, the confusion, confusion, um, panic, all those things. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And listen to us nine months later talking about what a gift this has been in a lot of ways. We miss terribly singing together. We miss standing next to each other. We miss the hugs. We miss making harmony uh, terribly. But we've also developed these amazing communities that that are it's a much more flattened sort of experience that what you're talking about it doesn't have to be this thing or this thing somebody said you know that she'd gone to some virtual rehearsals and other other and and how much how fun that was and you just learn and you, and you get to make new friends right uh and so when we are back together can you imagine we're gonna have to have you know the the board's gonna have to plan a whole day that we just stand around and talk to each other and run around and you got to wear your avatar, right? You got to wear your little box. I can only be two inches big, <laughs> run around and say hi and, and give hugs. Um, so congratulations to us is, is what I want to say. I, we need to be celebrating right now. And that's a big part of, of what today is, is also about later on, you're going to have an opportunity to think about, what did we learn during this Zoomed era of our lives that we want to take 
into our future that we've, you know, the budgets are going to look a little dif different because we're going to have to have a technology budget, don't you think? <laughs> so, that, so we can, so we can continue to learn and grow and make things available to our members in different ways. So um, I, my clock says, my clock says um, 9.52. And so how about we take a little break and you can run around, do your coffee thing. And we'll come back in 15 minutes, which would be, help, help me with that. Somebody that does that better than me. <laughs> Is that 10 at 12 after? Gary, you're talking. Did you figure it out? Like 10.05 uh, or something? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. Let's do 05. That works. Oh, Shelly got it figured out, but she's too late, Shelly. All right, I'll see you at 10.05. Creative, we've been uh, fear, fearless. We've said, we're gonna figure this out. And the, the result has been incredible. I, I, I heard the word global learning in, in one of the, the groups. And, uh, you know, the internationalness of our organization sometimes is not so obvious to us on the, in, unless we go to the international competition or something, but, but it, that's been really evident th this year. Uh, the other thing that I was thinking, you know, some of our, some of our leaders have stepped up in new and innovative ways. And, and I'm thinking about titanium, you know, how much fun has it been to watch them travel all over the world and attend rehearsals and get to know friends and, and this sort of thing. So imagine what that that arena will sound like the next time we get to see Titanium come on to, to the stage. Because, I mean, like it's not already crazy when they come on, they're crazy. So it's always crazy. But, you know, they, they've done some pretty amazing things. Uh, Jen Cook with her, her says it's Saturday sessions with directors, uh, you know, occasionally, um, somebody mentioned Kathleen Hansen earlier and the, the stuff that she put out. There's just been so much. And so I'm really proud of us. And I think we've learned a great deal in this process. So if we're, we're kind of back here. I'm going to share my uh, PowerPoint again, because I want to go to where we are now. We are at the place in the model about new beginnings. And new beginnings are mostly psychological. We don't run up to the to the finish line or the start starting blocks and say, now we go forward. I think we're already there. We we've we have a lot of momentum. We have a lot of great ideas. We have a plan now that we're working our way through um, as a world for, for getting healthy and being safe again. And so um, what we are feeling. That, that's psychological, but what I think we're feeling right now, and I hear it in all of you today, is new energy in a new direction. We are forever changed, and, and I think that uh, that's probably good. I, I heard, you know, less, less emphasis on competition, more emphasis on collaboration, cooperation, and competition's good. We like it. We like to, the, the point of it is, has to do about learning and, you know, marking where we are and charting progress and those kinds of things. So, you know, if we remember the, the purpose of competition, then yay. Um, expressions of a new identity. We absolutely have, are doing that, have done that. And so yay us. That's, that's where we are. Yay. I think we're, we're right there on the edge. And so going back and wearing your leader's hat again, our singers want to know that there's a future being planned for them. It's important for them to know that we are talking about this, that we're thinking about this, that we're, we're considering lots of different kinds of options and this sort of thing. So that's what today is about, is helping plan those futures. So our big question today is, how is my course going to transition to a new future? So um, let me unshare again. Whoops. Here we go. You can see each other. So un unmute and answer this question when if you have a don't, un don't unmute unless you're going to answer the question. <laughs> I've learned this. <laughs> so, um, but here's the question. What makes something exciting? Novelty. Novelty. Thank you, Drew. Shelly? 
when you have an emotional connection to something like a, a visceral feeling. An opportunity to grow in a way that you would like to grow. So a personal responsibility. Looking forward to something, seeing it, seeing something into the future. Spontaneity or um, a, sort of a surprise. We're challenging. Mm -hmm. Something you've never done before. Which can also cause fear. <laughs> what makes something come, oh, go, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh. Seeing guests attend our course. Isn't that fun? Who are these people who will join a chorus that they've never heard? Aren't they, they're going to be their own little group here, you know? <laughs> we, we have several in, in our chorus too. <laughs> like, wow, they're fearless. They're fearless in a way that we don't understand, right? What makes something compelling? Sort of like Elizabeth said, being relevant to your growth interests, I think that, that makes you pay attention. Learning something new that you never thought you would learn. Taking a chance on something that may be scary um, and intimidating, but, but taking a chance and doing it. Mm -hmm. When I think about compelling things, I think about things that, that Pique my curiosity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's who is going to do the teaching that's compelling. Mm -hmm. um, I find the unknown. Could you repeat Learning that? something you've known for a long time, but with a different insight, a different way of expressing it, and then the opportunity to be able to do that so that it touches somebody else. Mm -hmm. Something that's challenging or challenges your thought process. Something you feel you need to know right then at that moment. Harkening back to something that somebody said, um, I keep thinking about that line, they don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. So the presenter or the teacher itself actually sets the sets the bar and sets the atmosphere that allows people to really be compelled and willing to jump in and learn. I, I agree with that. I wanted to just say that if it's compelling to me, it's something that has somehow sparked in my brain that I could maybe do it. I, I could possibly make that happen. And that's why it's compelling. Chris, that is an amazing observation. And let me, I have said for decades that this organization is a receding horizon, that when you first stumble on it, you're doing well, you know, to read the base clef or, or whatever, or try to figure out the base clef. You, you're, the victory is like, mostly I stayed with my section. <laughs> the, 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 the measures early on are very different than the longer you've been in, the more opportunity that you see. Things you never thought, never dreamed that you would do. Things that other people bring to you and say, have you ever considered? Have you thought about? And then you find out that not only are you, you have some knack for it, but you're really talented in that area, right? And so th this, organization continues to have endless opportunities for people to grow and change and learn and contribute and serve and, and you know, just and make friends. And so I, I think that is, that is what we're all about. And I, so our challenge is to, you know, we, we've um, gone from a, a space where the expertise stood in front of us to now the expertise is all around us. 
and, and we understand more about other people's skills and, and what they bring to the, to the journey for us. And so it's going to be fun when we get back together. I, I spend a lot of time talking about collaborative learning and this, we're, we're, that's exactly what we're doing. Okay. So anyway, um, anybody, any more thoughts about compelling? And there's, you know, Sue Beck's on here, Sue, Be Sue Beck, the writer. So I can't believe there's not more words coming out of Sue Beck's mouth. <laughs> so, <laughs> For me, there's all, if, it, if it's compelling, I expect to experience um, um, emotional gratification also, uh, um, spiritual almost, but um, in addition to the, to the learning part of it, um, a big part of it is emotional for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Uh, Leslie, could you repeat what your first word, first we did, now compelling, what was that other word? Exciting. Oh, exciting. Mm -hmm. I love, I love these words. <laughs> I love words too, so. <laughs> cool. Uh, Melanie? Yeah, I think one more thing for me, for something to be compelling, this is just me personally, um, it needs to feel, this is a really overused word, but it needs to feel really genuine or authentic. I don't want to feel like somebody's selling me something. Mm -hmm. um, I want somebody who's fearless enough to be vulnerable, which terrifies me. So if they, if they can actually do something that terrifies me, um, I find it really compelling. You have season tickets to the, to the, um, what do you go the roller coaster? <laughs> what are those amusement parks? Good grief, I forgot. Are they alive? I don't know. Look, I haven't even thought about this. <laughs> so probably not. <laughs> so um, let, me, let me bring back my little, my PowerPoint. So today we're talking about how do we transition into the new future. And um, I think this was an important thing that I came across too. This is just, just yesterday. I was adding to this, this PowerPoint this morning, but just yesterday I came across this and something that I read um, that the best leaders are not thinking about going back. And I hear that very prominently in this conversation with you. And so congratulations. I, that's a reflection of a very, very strong region with great leadership uh, across uh, you, you, plenty of international leadership here, tremendous regional leaders and I hear in incredible chorus leaders at, at, at across the risers, right? So um, there's never been a greater opportunity to reframe, reimagine, and reinvent. reinvent. And, and that's exactly what, what we're talking about and what you've been talking about this morning. So the question is, will you cling to the past or embrace the future? I think I know the answer to this in this region, right? And I think that this is the pervasive perspective across the organization too. You know, there, there are no doubt, there are pockets, there are choruses there are, you know, that are struggling uh, that, that don't have the wealth that I, that I feel here. And I'm, talk, I'm talking about financial wealth. I'm talking about resources, about skills and talents and, and all those kinds of things. There are courses that don't have those things, but I don't feel that happening in Region 13. So I think we're not clinging to the past. I think we're embracing the future, okay? So good on you. So uh, in the my other world, we would call this disruption. And <laughs> many of you probably use this word a lot. Um, and so disruption can be a good thing and often is a good thing. Um, some opportunities, some things I, I've, I've learned, by the way, that if I have a, my um, iPad with me, I can actually see my notes. I miss, I will look forward to having the speaker view back someday on the whole PowerPoint <laughs> experience. So disruption, some opportunities there. Let's see, what did I do? Did I delete it? Mm -hmm, I did. So um, power, let's see, the personal computers, absolutely. Uh, think about the, the Walkman that 
uh, how that disrupted the music industry. It was transistor radios first because they went from a big console kind of thing to something I could carry around, but somebody else was still choosing my music. And then, you know, when Sony came up with a Walkman, I got to choose my music and the sequence that I wanted to listen to it in. So that was a big, big deal. Um, other kinds of, like I mentioned personal computer. Um, Amazon was a disruptive force and look how they benefited in this. Um, I had heard of Zoom a year ago, year and a half ago, uh, but I was still more comfortable using Skype and I haven't hardly heard anything about Skype. So Skype didn't adjust and adapt in the, in the way that they needed to. And so I'm sorry for them, right? <laughs> so um, what else? Disruption in, in terms of um, I wish I could find my notes because that they were really good, really, really good. Give me just a second. There we go. Um, I, I watched a video this week also from the National Association of, Association of Teachers of Singing, the NATS organization, and they've been doing a lot of research and, and helping all of us, right? We've seen a lot of those videos um, in, in the last year. And this was an interesting, this is their most recent video. And it was kind of an interesting group of people. They, they were teachers, but across lots of different uh, performing fields. And one of, the, there, one of the, the speakers said that there has been enormous, the disruption, this disruption that we had have had created additional opportunity for diverse performers to access opportunities because previous barriers, travel costs, et cetera, were simply removed. And so what they were seeing, and this were, these were folks on coming from Broadway and, and that sort of thing, that because the, because the audition process has always looked like show up at this time and do these things, they simply couldn't do that. And so they've had to re re con configure and reformat the way that they operate in, in their world. And because of that, they are seeing a whole different sort of performer arrive uh, online for opportunities. And, and it's changing that industry too, changing the way that Broadway operates. And so, uh, and then one of the guys was at one of the um, fine arts academies in, in New England and we're semi seeing similar experiences for students enrolled. And so I think, again, it's, that's this disruption is gonna bring us, like we were talking about these new people, who are these new people who have never, <laughs> and, and, and have we found ways, did, did you guys all wake up one morning and go, how do we know they're singing baritone? I mean, really? <laughs> Why is it they all want to sing baritone? How would you? <laughs> so they're they're even more intrepid than. <laughs> but you know, did you have to go back and say we got to figure out how to check and make sure they're not learning an entire song in not baritone? You know, like some occasional lead or whatever it is. So anyway, the new kinds of people coming into our lives. So that's that's very very exciting. Um, I want to put this up here because I think if you're going to write something down today, right, whoops. Oh, what is this green screen down here? Here's the quote. As leaders, trust is the currency of confidence. And, you know, we build trust with our, our members over time. And hopefully we've done, we've probably done a lot of that in the last year. It's the, the reassurance that it's gonna be okay. And then demonstrating that it's gonna be okay. Look at this opportunity, look at the stuff that has come to us. And so using our trust capital to set direction, get alignment and develop commitment. I think this is, this is really important to, to who we are and where we're going. This is super important to me. I, I love collaborative leadership. I love collaborative learning. And so as we move forward, this is one of the approaches that I want us to kind of sort of keep in mind that in collaborative leadership is saying, here is our collective intelligence. 
And it's what we have on our own risers and it's what we have in our regions. It's what we have in this global organization and all the other sorts of skills and influences and experiences that we have that we bring with us to this experience. Uh, from many different organizational roles. So it's not just this group of people that will make the decision, that will have input, will have expectations because we've already said we don't wanna do that anymore. I heard it this morning. We're not doing that anymore. So whatever that was, we have different opportunities. We have to, and, and exciting opportunities, but using all of these things to accomplish our goals and pulling those from lots of different places. So we are thinking about partnerships. We're thinking about collaborations. We're thinking about new opportunities or doing old things in new ways. We've already done that, right? We're taking a different view. And then here's the question. What do you want to take with you from the COVID era into the new future? What have we learned? So some of the stuff I heard in the small group included um, making sure that we, we don't lose ways to learn on our own time. I think that's what Sue was talking about. I want to be able to access this information and this knowledge and this training and this, this learning in my own way on my own time, that that's important to her. Okay. Oh, now I got to pull up the chat. Let me see all this stuff. Yeah. Keep using Zoom. Oh my gosh. Who said that? Carrie? I know, but Carrie, a year ago, people would have said, no, 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 no. Go ahead. Uh, you know, a lot of our members are saying, you know, I, I just can't do Zoom. I, I don't want to do Zoom, but um, there are so many things that you could still do, Zoom, you know, using Zoom in other ways besides just rehearsal stuff. I mean, you can just do reach outs and, and yeah, we just need to keep using it even though, even if we are able to get back into, mm -hmm. you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Yes, me, yes, Drew, I agree. Meetings are going to be so much easier. Oh my gosh. And uh, to plan, to attend, you know, we know how to do this now. Elizabeth, um, meetings. yes, all kinds of, all kinds of, you know, you know, I've, I've done, it was very, very difficult, but I spent the last three or four months working with a chorus on developing a strategic plan via Zoom. And it was the hardest strategic planning I have ever done because there had to be so much planning on, on the front end of it to make sure like this, that people had the opportunity to contribute and, and, and this sort of thing. But they're making good use of their time. They, they didn't have a strategic plan. They didn't know, you know, they, there was a lot of stuff they didn't, hadn't figured out. And so um, this is making good use of time when, because one people, these courses don't want to do strategic planning because it takes away singing time, right? <laughs> so here's an opportunity. So yeah, even we, we don't have snow days anymore. Okay. Uh, Zoom during the first few, yes. Let's see. Priority of personal connection in the face-to-face -face rehearsals? Absolutely. We got to find ways to stay connected in the way that we are. Remember the first few times you, you had a Zoom meeting with your, and all you can do is look at people's living rooms? Like, wow, I didn't. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and then people got smart and said, I can put something besides that thing back there behind us. Uh, yeah, the folks in Alaska are going to, they're, they're going to benefit from this. So you know, there's not there's not a substitute for standing next to somebody on on the risers and making harmony, from finding a way to lock the cord and feel that sort of sensation. That is truly why we're still here, <laughs> because we want to do that again. <laughs> we have not lost that, but we can use our time differently. Okay, so hey, this, is, this is Joy in Fairbanks. <clears throat> Sorry, I missed the first. First part I overslept, but um, our our director, <clears throat> Gail, she, she she told us yes the singing is important, but that's not really what's important. It's it's our connection, and we said we sang for a while, and we all know how we you know we all we all muted ourselves and sang our part. <clears throat> 
But at the end, there was always at least 20 minutes. And her first question is, how is everybody doing? And of the 31 members that we have in our chorus, many times there were 27 people who showed up. And it was about the music. And I've always said, it's not all about the music. It's about our personal connections. And she made sure that everybody had an opportunity to say what was on their mind and how they were doing and checking in, in with one another. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joy. Exactly. Anybody else? Yeah, um, I, I think what Peggy said about um, Alaska is so important. And for the rest of us, too, um, it's like, whether people live close or far away, we have the exact same ability to access them. And the only issue is now time zones. Um, so um, I'm, I'm hoping that we can continue bringing in our members that maybe aren't uh, in our city all the time if they're you know, out of town for winter or whatever to, you know, we've recorded rehearsals with Pride, but I would love to live stream rehearsals to Zoom so that people can be at home and sing along with the chorus in real time um, and feel like they're part of it, even if they can't be there, you know, and we'll still record it and all that. But um, it was that. And, and the other thing is everybody hates making recordings, but the only, right? No, <laughs> nobody loves this, but the only way that we can put our voices together is through recordings right now. And so, I mean, we've been doing a recording process. We're on week three of it right now. And the grumbles are starting to die down, which is great. Um, so I'm thinking coming out of this process, the whole let's make a quick recording and send it in and slap it together. Um, that's something that we can really work with. Um, I, I, I'm hoping coming out of this, we're a little less scared of recording. I agree. Um, although. Well, I, I, I'm not too excited about recording myself right now because I think I'm not as good a singer as I was a year ago, <laughs> but still. I, um, so new opportunities, new perspectives. You know, I mean, that's what you're saying, Drew. People are not as worried about this as they once were. And uh, so good, good on us. We're changing our culture. Um, Yes, Carrie, thank you. It uh, gives opportunities for people to attend a rehearsal from home once we can meet in person, even if they aren't comfortable with that yet. Uh, and so Shelly went off to Austin for the, for the winter uh, to try to get away from the snow. Um, but <laughs> yeah. so she's been able to participate from, from wherever she is. And so, you know, one of the things that we'll talk about later here is about culture and how our culture, our culture will change, is changing, has changed. So things are gonna be, yeah, silly Shelly. I bet Shelly didn't take her snow shovel with her to, <laughs> to Austin. <laughs> so um, we are getting ready for another breakout. Let me get the question up here for you. This is the question of the day, right? <laughs> And if you came to this session thinking I was going to give you the answer to that, wrong. <laughs> That's not the way it works. You all have the answer to this. But we need to be together and having, you know, this sort of cross, uh, cross pollination of ideas and perspectives and thoughts and that sort of thing to answer these questions. Heard lots of good ideas today. And so, um, I think Sandy's got us ready to go into another breakout. So he, I forgot to tell you, write down that question, how's my course gonna transition into a new future? Which is, you know, why we're here. So this time when we go into small groups, um, we're going, I need, let's see, I made notes about this when I was making tea. We need a facilitator and a recorder, but I forgot to mention earlier, we need a timekeeper. Somebody keep an eye on on the, the clock and say, okay, we you know we're gonna have to wrap this up. And um, Sandy, I think I had said a different number that I'm going to use because I know we ran out of time. So um, I'm gonna give us once I call time here, 45 minutes to talk about it, and when we come back, we're gonna do some reporting out. But the 
what I want you to do is to use some of the stuff that we've talked about here this morning, the stuff that you've already said, what's important for what is in our new future. What are the things that, that we want to make sure we have? What are the things that we've missed so desperately? We want to make sure we have those things too. Okay. So that is the question. How do, how do we make this happen? So Sandy's going to throw us into small groups again, and we're going to have each one of them. You figure out who your facilitator is and who your recorder is and your timekeeper. And we have 45 minutes. And so that looks to be by my clock at 20 after. Does that sound like right to you guys? Okay. All right. Have fun. Go make new friends. You know, before we get to this next piece, uh, Sue, is this a good time? Are you here, Sue? This is a great time. Okay. Sure. I don't know. I, I will try not to take too much time up, but I don't know if any of you or many of you know that Charlene O'Connor took a terrible fall about four weeks ago down her stairs. She broke six ribs, <laughs> punctured a lung, oh tore my. her bladder, got a fracture in her pelvis and in her spine. She mm. is still in the hospital. Oh, she yeah. She has... The t she's not catheterized anymore. Let me tell you all the grim details. She's had the tube taken out of her chest, so her okay. lung is healing up. Mm -hmm. The ribs seem to be the biggest thing that's causing mm -hmm. her the, the biggest problems right now. Fortunately, yes. she went to Harborview, which for those of you who don't know, is <clears throat> top of the line uh, mm -hmm. hospital here in Seattle. And uh, she had the best care possible. She said yesterday, she texted me yesterday and said, I had all my surgeons in, all seven of them. And they were t asking me all my all these questions. Because she had surgery on her pelvis a couple of weeks ago to put a mm -hmm. pin in it so that she mm -hmm. could um, strengthen that joint and, and be able to walk in the next, I don't know, I think it's going to be five weeks before she can put any weight on it. Mm -hmm. And then she also told me that they're looking into a rehab center in Puyallup, which for those of you who don't know is south of Seattle and it's the city where her son lives. So that's going to be good for her and her sister lives down there too, but it's a five-star uh, rehab center. And I don't know how long she'll be there, but her convalescence is going to take quite a while. Yes, so uh, if you'd like to send her uh, a call, card um uh, you can send it to the bothell address and if you need to get more information about that just email me and i'll send you um what i have so tell, tell us the name again sue who are you talking about charlene o'connor can you just get your in the chat i'm sorry can you maybe put her address in the chat oh uh, yes i can do that thank you thank you sue you bet Thank you for giving the time. Oh, what a frightening. Oh, it's been horrible. Yeah. 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 My gosh. Okay. So if you would, can you mute yourself unless you're going to talk? Okay. Because um, what is all that rattling, you know, that always happens on Zoom? But won't we miss that? We don't have riser chatter anymore to deal with. We've got husbands. So 
and children and dogs and etc. So anyway, when you guys came back in the room, I could feel the excitement coming through the screen. So I know that you had a most fabulous time together. So um, I again, it's kind of working if people just unmute and talk. So take turns, answer the question. What did you talk about? What are you excited to share? Alice, I see your hand up right away. Yeah, we had we, we covered a lot of ground here. So um, very quickly, uh, I guess, uh, we talked about <clears throat> going into the future, planning guest nights, uh, which is uh, we all felt was important. Um, one of the other things that um, Denise had said, which had been touched on the last time, was doing videograms for specific um, holidays, for whatever that might be. We all agreed that um, having a really good functioning website was very important um, and that having good learning tracks of our music um, on that was also equally important. Um, Peggy talked about that she wants to revamp the rep, her repertoire to be more relevant when we start to come back. <clears throat> um, we did, uh, one person talked about surveying, surveys, doing small groups with or without masks, are people willing to start doing that? Um, we talked about uh, showmanship and expression via Zoom. And one of the um, suggestions was you take a video of each section to highlight that section uh, and then everybody else watches what they're doing and the rest of the course does not know what song they are working on. So through their expression and their showmanship, the rest of the course is supposed to be able to guess what that song is that they're doing. And I thought that was a really great idea. Another person said they do videos um, to pass for contests, not just um, audio tapes. And then one of the things we touched on getting back together the first time, because um, I don't think there's going to, we should come back right away, have 15 minutes and then get back up on the risers. Um, otherwise we won't stop talking, which will drive our directors nuts. So should we have a party um, and um, otherwise, otherwise it might be hard to sing. We'll be so excited to see everybody. We'd have tears, particularly me. And uh, I can't sing through tears. So, um, <clears throat> so we need time to um, get back in touch with seeing all of our chorus mates again in person. Um, <clears throat> we talked about how to build up stamina again. Several names came up. Patty Cobb Baker had one. Nikki Blackburn had one. And I know we have one. And Chris, I can't remember the name of that man's name. But I know we have one that we got. Um, and we <clears throat> talked about the importance of weekly newsletters to keep everyone informed. And that there was this very nice app from Google, Marco Polo. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can record on that and then perhaps send it to a coach or to your director and get some coaching back on that. Okay, that's it. <laughs> we, covered, we covered a lot. Yeah, you did. Excellent. Uh, Sally? Hi. Uh, we covered a lot also and, and boiled it down to three or four main things. Um, one of them is uh, talking about going back to face-to-face -face rehearsals. We would like to see continue is the focus on each other. The recognizing skills and talents of members, keeping, we feel that Zoom has kept us connected in a way that we don't connect when we're uh, in regular rehearsals because it's come in, get on the riser, sing, go home. So we wanna keep that a part of the face-to-face -face rehearsal as much as possible as much as our directors will allow. Um, also connecting to the greater community, other singing groups in the area, how we can um, uh, regain our status in the community as a singing organization along with others because we've kind of all faded into the woodwork for the time being. Also that we would continue to use Zoom uh, many of the ways we've already talked about Zoom as needed for distant members, for meetings, for individual lessons, and, and all the great uses of Zoom that we already talked about. And that's it. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Sheree? 
Well, our group um, was also very excited and enthusiastic about uh, a phase-in plan and uh, how that is going to look. And some of the choruses um, have created plans. I think the, one of the biggest things that our group took out of this is sharing is caring. And instead of keeping our ideas to ourselves as in our individual choruses, let's continue the communication with our different singing choruses in our re region and even in, in the world. You know, we, we're brilliant and let's, let's not keep things so secret and, and share the ideas that we have and the growth that we've had. Um, in some of the phase-in plans, you know, some choruses have created a written policy. Um, they've sent out surveys. Uh, they've formed a medical team. So when we do resume, that there is a there is a plan in place. Um, other choruses have talked about when the weather is better to rehearse outside, still socially distanced and still masked, but then it could be almost like a threefer. You know, we're outside, we're singing. Everyone, when we can be outside, is are going to be outside. So it's potential for a management or membership drive um, and it's community outreach. So it's three things in, in, in one, one setting, if you will. Um, and so those are just some of the phase back in ideas that, that our group our, our group had. Some choruses are doing what they're calling clouder groups, um, which doesn't have anything to do with singing, but they are putting together. So this group's meeting on Wednesday afternoon and they're all playing bridge together, you know, because, or they're, this group's meeting on this day and they're doing cooking stuff together. And it's just, I think everybody is of the same mindset that we're connected at the hearts now. We're not just connected vocally. And so reaching out and, you know, touching hearts, you know, which it is, it's, you know, great line for a song. Um, so it's really an opportunity it, that, that we want to now expand on. We've seen, we've, we've made it through the rain. We've made it through and we're, we're almost there, but we have to be careful. We have to be very, very, very careful and, and, and phase back in smartly. Um, you know, we, we, for anyone who's had COVID, myself included, it's no fun. It's very scary. And, uh, you know, eight of our members in one chorus had COVID. So it's, um, well, between two choruses and it was scary, my entire quartet. So, um, we got to be smart. We have to be very smart, be very careful. Um, but you know, we're, we're brilliant. So we can come up with a safe plan and just follow it. So that was our room seven. Whoop, whoop. Thank you, Sheree. Uh, Vicki. Hi, I think we were room three. We had a great talk. We also uh, talked about maintaining connections, some of which has already been discussed. Uh, one of the things that we thought would be a great way to keep uh, the individual um, at mind would be to do PVIs under glass. So you kind of get to know the individual's voices and their confidence level. And um, it's a learning experience for everybody who might be watching this on Zoom. Uh, Alaska Sound Celebration had started something pre-pandemic, which they think is great. And I think is great. And they want to continue is having small breakout sessions of membership at large where they would talk about uh, specific issues related to chorus uh, life or whatever. And, you know, like 10 to 20 minutes, whatever topic. And they, she, she said that they found out so many interesting things from individuals who might not have spoken up otherwise about things. All right, so moving on uh, to the next sort of big topic is when we all come back together, we're gonna be uh, include including in this large group of people. We have the leaders, the, the sort of positive plus people, and it's gonna trickle down through everybody to people who maybe are at the uh, less involved, less enthusiastic end who are gonna be looking for uh, reasons why they wanna stay engaged at all, or if they, this is the time for them to uh, bail. You know, it's, this is happening, I think, across the board 
uh, in all choruses. And so we need to be respectful of everyone's feelings and opinions about um, what the, the new world is going to look like and not to nullify anybody's feelings, even if it's a naysaying, um, what we might feel is like a drag on, on positive forward motion, um, keeping in touch with out of contact uh, members is gonna be important during this time so that people don't feel uh, irrelevant or not included. Um, what is it gonna look like when we get back together once the management team and the director sets a protocol of what is gonna happen and what's gonna be safe? We have to have buy-in and support of all the membership. And if people can't support that, we don't wanna have fractionating people uh, saying this is not how we want to go forward we just have to you know like set a top a top down and say this is what we are now and if if, if there's fallout then that's what might happen respectful sharing of opinions zero tolerance of you know pushing um people's opinions down because you don't agree with them um using regional mediation if we need to have mediators how would we do conflict resolution? Um, you have to accept the fact that there will not be 100% buy-in. Um, and we had a, a discussion from a membership coordinator who felt the, the weight of what's being you know, like, she has come to the realization that she can't control the behavior of everyone and how they feel. So sort of re relinquishing the weight that we feel to carry um, everything on our shoulders because it's a group after all. Okay. Vicki, can you? Can... You're muted, Nancy. Unmuted. Okay. Uh, can you elaborate what a PVI under glass? That yeah. would be a, a giving a PVI uh, in real time so that all the Zoom attendees can listen in or, or even uh, in a live rehearsal, having somebody come up in front of the group. Sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, personal strength to do it. Some of the uh, less confident members might hold back, but it's really a good experience for everybody. Excellent, thank you. Uh, I saw another hand go up. Oh, Chris, I see you, Chris. Yeah, I don't know what our room number was, but we focused in on one area. Very, um, it just was really big in our minds, and um, it has to do with that break-in period. The concerns are that um, right now there's a new music floating around in choruses that we we are learning, quote learning, but we don't really have a way to assess. And we're concerned about when we come back together, let's say in September, some people will feel like we're all off the paper and we can sing together now, but half the course will not be off the paper at all. And so there'll be it, conflicts could arise in frustration. Um, learning in cars that we used to do is not happening um, because we're not going anywhere. Technology limitations have thwarted the learning process really uh, pretty significantly. And kinesthetic learners that are on the risers and, and really thrive in that to learn with the other voices are suffering. Their learning style is just completely not there. And um, people will also um, are, are just have a lot of fear about COVID still that overrides their desire to learn and come back and and those kinds of things. And so with this break-in period, it, we think it's really, really important that that be well planned, well thought out, and considering all the things that everyone has said about feelings and opinions and, and thoughts about vaccinations and who will and who won't be and how will we handle that. And um, we, on solutions for this break-in period, some ideas that came up are that, um, we need to encourage everybody to use the tools and the learning tracks they have. And then um, 
setting clear expectations of what it is we're going to expect. And I know we might not get 100% buy-in, but we just have to, as leaders, make those, those definitions. Um, polls, doing polls at the end of rehearsals once uh, they uh, start, um, asking people how they felt about it. How did they think rehearsal went? Um, Pre-break-in classes. So before the break-in period even starts, we, we preempt it with preparation and helping our members get up to speed. Um, we suggested regarding the technology issue, one of our members said technology godmothers. So people who are willing to join a meeting of say baritones who no one is technology, they just can't do it. Where they have a technology godmother who sits in and just does nothing but help them do that. Um, I just love that name. That was from Sue Middleton. Um, putting in place protections that honor the fears that members have about the virus. So um, when we have rehearsals once again. So those are the things we came up with, but we were primarily focused on the need for a very clear plan. And then we can start sharing that plan and getting the members excited that it's a stable plan, that it's a broad plan. It's all encompassing. It takes into account their fears and thoughts and dreams and wishes and, and, um, and then put it into motion. Chris, can I add, uh, talk a little bit about our idea about slow starts. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. The break-in period is similar to coming back to school after a summer break, um, a, slow, a slow start. Maybe a smaller group comes first and we build upon that, or we start in a park first with people who are willing to meet in the park, then that moves in the fall to the rehearsal hall. And, um, and we also talked about that to make this plan, we have to believe something as leaders. We have to create a, a belief in our minds of, of what we're going to expect is happening and then create the plan on that belief. But we have to then change the plan if that foundational belief about the future does elude us in some way, uh, we have to be flexible. But we do have to choose to believe something to create the plan. Um, I have my hand, I'm sorry. This is Paula. I don't think you can see me. So is it okay if I go ahead and talk? Yeah, yeah, I can see you, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, in much of what other people are saying, but we had three directors in our group. So one of the things that came out was the need to, uh, the rehearsal plan needs to be um, revised as you, in that period of getting back together, live streaming it. So if people don't feel like they want to come be involved in a larger group just yet, they can be involved in the live stream or the Zoom recording or however you can do it. Um, having transition times and more transition times in rehearsals, having little moments of movement, exercise movements, or getting together to do a little small, small group game or, you know, stuff like that so that allows people to visit with one another, but also allows them to move off the risers to build stamina and stuff like that. Um, that we, Elizabeth brought out that we have a, I think it was Elizabeth, a window to reach out to people that in coming out of COVID, they're going to be hungry to be with people and those people that are singers will want to sing. So to really plan and um, take advantage of that moment of reaching into our community for new members and for community involvement to sing for them. Um, perhaps using virtual choirs, even going forward, uh, virtual chorus performances so that it can continue to reach out community outreach, but it also builds um, independence in our singers to have to make those recordings. So it can be a positive thing, keep continuing. Um, one of the things we talked about was um, changing our perceptions of contests since we have realized how much the personal 
is so important and really having conversations in our chorus about what we want out of our chorus experience and out of our chorus life and using that to set the strategic plan because none of us are going to come back the same as we left. So none of our members will either. So to ask them and really use their response to make our plans for the future instead of assuming that they're going to want the same thing that they always had they may want something different now. So it's good to ask and good to plan with their thoughts in mind. And that's all. Miss Luann, um, our team, I think we were number one. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> we had many of the same things already mentioned, but we talked about needing to relearn how to connect to the director uh, because we haven't really had to sing with the director for a long time. Um, <laughs> making sure we talk about, and I think this maybe was mentioned, um, uh, the topic of vaccinations and masks and stuff and, and how to do that uh, in a way that makes everybody comfortable coming back. Um, we may need to re-examine, I think Paula just said this, re-examine who we are as a chorus. Um, and then um, what does success look like when we first get together as a chorus? Um, what what are going to be those small wins uh, that we can build on for later? Uh, focus a lot of time on on uh, vocal warm ups because our members aren't as used to singing as they were, and it'll be really easy to uh, to over sing uh, when we first get together if we're not careful about how we do that, as well as the physical warm ups that Paula was talking about. Um, Plan something that makes people excited to come back, a uh, celebration of some sort, uh, and then being flexible, reevaluating our plans after uh, a, a month or so and adjusting uh, as necessary to meet the needs of people. And then again, focus on new members and uh, like Drew and or uh, Elizabeth stated, this is going to be a time when a lot of people out in the community are looking for connection and and we can be that connection for them. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, Sydney? Yes, um, I don't have a lot additional because wow, these, these rooms, this is amazing, everybody's ideas. I love this so much. Um, but we just to add to what we've said earlier, I think is to make sure that we keep using the tools that we've learned how to use uh, through the pandemic, that Zoom has some tools to keep using. There's YouTube performances out there that um, we can use to learn from. Uh, Paula has been doing in her musical theater classes, having the chorus look at a, she's provided us with a link of a performance that she wants us to evaluate. and. That's, that's something that we can continue to use even after we get back together to have little homework uh, using, a, we've discovered so many resources that's out there and performers uh, that have been frustrated and not able to perform have created their own performances on YouTube and they are, there is a wealth of talent out there that we can be tapping into um, to become better singers ourselves. Um, let's see, and also just to keep using some Zoom meetings for our management teams. Um, it's, a, it's a tool that I, we don't want to waste the value of it, whether it be also to um, have coaches still that maybe are from New Zealand or London or somewhere to come visit our choruses on a night that we might plan a Zoom rehearsal just to have a coach with an exceptional out of town coach. Um, and also one of our meeting people mentioned Joe Cerruti's uh, meeting that we had a few weeks ago about emerging uh, from this and that the focus for us, which other people have already said, needs to be from the bottom up, that we ask our members, that we keep in touch with them, what is working for them, what they want, and always keep them in mind. That's 
I think that's good. Excellent. Anybody else? Start talking because I can't see everybody. I'm going to add one more thing that I haven't heard yet, and that's um, transitioning our members who have not joined us during the Zoom time. That first night when we get back, we want them to feel very much a part of us. We don't want there to be any guilt or fear in coming back. And, and um, so that needs to be planned and handled very carefully. Absolutely. Uh, I love how there's a tenor baritone war happening in the chat. <laughs> I know, I, th I heard that uh, example about, oh, it's the basis. Yes, Drew, you're exactly, well, they're just emerging from the bar. Are you kidding? How do uh, you, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I heard the example of using the, the baritones being technology challenged and, and then here it is right over here. Uh, so, oh my gosh. What a powerful, powerful conversation this, this has been. Uh, I can't imagine that you could have been more comprehensive. Uh, what's super evident to me, some of the themes that I heard coming through were, um, you know, keeping our members at the forefront, taking good care of them, that that is the, the biggest priority right there, uh, making it okay, that, uh, and continuing to reassure uh, finding ways to challenge. I heard uh, in the group that I was in, you know, talking about planning events. Uh, we're, we're sort of event driven. So what does it look like uh, to go to have a fall show? Can you do a virtual show? Do you want to have a holiday show? You know, how to, bringing new music forward that everybody gets to learn. It's a little frightening to think about what your contest songs are gonna sound like. So maybe something new would be a little easier to listen to for a while, right? Uh, making sure that um, I, I heard conversation too about the singing outdoors, which is awesome um, for a lot of reasons. And that requires people to listen differently anyway. And so, and it always sounds different outside. And so maybe that's a good way to sort of transition back into, you know, what's, what's this really gonna sound like? So um, guys, this was, that was amazing. Um, so I did do, let, let me pull my, my PowerPoint back up here a little bit. <laughs> what you've been talking about so far were just fabulous leadership approaches, taking care of members, taking care of members, taking care of members, setting a direction, being flexible, listening, et cetera. And so here, here's some more thoughts. Um, and I, and I heard this, I heard a medical team in, in there and some, some of those kinds of things, but to create a, a task force, a planning task force, if you haven't already done there or, or to go back and add to what you've already done. So, you know, people with different backgrounds and skills and experiences and, um, and perspectives, it's, that's really, really important, I think. Um, continuing to seek out expert resources, and that's, you know, on a world stage and, and nationally, but also, uh, you know, don't forget to check out what's happening in your, wherever your rehearsal hall is. They may, they may have a totally different, you know, Denver's a big old place and every county has got a different set of standards. And so what happens in the county I live in is different from the county where our rehearsal hall is. And so don't forget to check on what's happening there. Um, and then aligning those plans with, with what's happening out there. And then of course, you've already talked about this. What did we learn during our virtual rehearsal time that we wanna make sure that we inject into new, into the next iteration of what it looks like. Um, we had talked in my small group about, you know, our attention span stinks uh, and our stamina, it's standing on the risers is gonna be difficult. And so we're gonna to have to change things up maybe more frequently than we once did. Uh, to help people stay connected, stay focused, et cetera. Um, and that's probably good teaching anyway, to sh shake things up every now and more frequently than we would otherwise have done that. Um, oh, I get the click. I heard all of these from you. Listen and then listen more and then listen more right? How important it is to, to continue to check in with people. Um, 
to honor their concerns, to validate what they're worried about. Uh, and it could not, it, it might not be getting COVID. It might not, it might be, I'm really scared to listen to how I sound in the context of this ensemble. You know, so listen to what, what their concerns are. Um, attending to the culture, and, and you, you already talked about that, not all will, will be able to participate for, for whatever reason. It, and it may not be some uh, imposition. It's not, a, it may not be self-imposed. It may be imposed by families, by spouses, by workplaces, by, by whatever. And so they won't be able to participate in, in the way that we, what we do is a high-risk activity as we've learned here. And so, you know, there, there may be employers that say, nope, <laughs> you know, you're, you're too important to what goes on here. I, I need you to continue to follow a different set of, of rules. Managing expectations. I heard you all talk about that. Managing your own, having the director, you know, manage people's expectations. We are not going to sound the same. We wouldn't have sounded the same a year later anyway but this is going to be a different sort of not sounding the same. <laughs> we, are, we are always changing. Um, I, I was thinking this next one, make it visual, like a vision board. When somebody had said in this report out how important it is to express what, what we want to be. And is there a way that you can make that visual that, that you know, we can keep that in front of people in, in ways that, that we might not have done it in the past uh, in new ways. Uh, I also heard these two things, equity and inclusion. So um, not everybody's going to start from the same place. They're not going to necessarily start from where they were when they left. And um, so that this is what the, I think where the whole technology came from, you know, the baritone godmothers, what was it, the technology, <laughs> that, was, that was fabulous. So uh, how, how do we help people be comfortable with this? Also, um, the folks who weren't able to join us for Zoom, that, that wasn't their scene, they're going to be in a very different place. They're going to be disconnected from us probably, and so making sure that we're we're attending to um, what they need, what they what's important to them, and always inclusion. Um, I heard this, and and I this is in all the everything I read in the literature about this. Focus on communicating communicating and then communicate again and then communicate again and communicate again and again and again and again. Um, so, so that we know what's happening, so that they know what's happening. And then I think building redundancy into what you're doing, which is the continuing to offer Zoom. I mean, if you're, if you're gonna be in a rehearsal hall, then you know, make the technology work so that you can, so you, you can broadcast that to people who can't be there. And I think that is, absolutely going to be part of our new norms going forward. This will help folks who aren't comfortable yet being at the rehearsal hall, but it will help folks who are traveling or, or who, you know, I, I think we're going to have different expectations and standards. You know, if you don't feel well, you don't come at all to rehearsal instead of you come and you stay away from people or whatever. So I think in order to keep people engaged and connected, and moving forward and feeling part of and included and all that sort of thing that we're gonna to have to do this sort of redundancy for, for a good long while. Um, I heard this one, planning scenarios. You know, maybe we phase this in, we start outside. Uh, it's, I think that the weather's gonna be on our side. You know, It's good that we're going into summer here and that, that gives more possibilities. And so we might think about what that looks like. Uh, starting with small groups. Um, this is an opportunity. Maybe, maybe you have your chorus quartets lead rehearsals uh, in small groups. Uh, it, it allows them to develop rehearsal sk or leadership skills and, and be a differently engaged with the chorus. Um, let's see, returning to virtual rehearsals, et cetera. Oh, I know what I was thinking there. We, we might find out that we come back on Tuesday this week, and then we got to go back to Zoom Tuesday next week because that we didn't have all 
it, it didn't go quite as planned and we want to be successful. So give us two weeks to figure this out. So we, you know, so be prepared to go back and forth between live rehearsals and virtual rehearsals for a while if, if the occasion warrants it. Um, if, and we, we all will have policies and that sort of thing, make complying with that easy, as easy as you can. If you decide that everybody's got to sign a waiver every week, everybody needs to do the health check every week, make it easy so that they can do that without inconveniencing them. Um, I, I don't think in the short run that we're going to have a lot of concerns about policy as far as attendance goes, but that may, me, may need adjusted. Uh, you know, lots of us have rules and policies about how many uh, rehearsals you need to be present for, et cetera, before some big event. And this, that's what I was thinking about there. We, we, that may need to change a little bit. We need to review those in, in a new context and redefine attendance. You know, maybe it's not being on the risers. Maybe it's being on Zoom, you know, if they can't be there for, for whatever reason. And I absolutely heard the last one, <laughs> be flexible and then be more flexible and be flexible again and differently flexible. It, we just, this is gonna be a situation that morphs for a good long while. And I think we're wise to, to say, here's the goal, here's what we think it's gonna look like and here's how we think we're gonna to get there and be prepared to say, well, that wasn't so much, okay? Um, and, our, and, and continue to invite our chorus members to, to contribute to these conversations about how, how we move forward. Um, oh, these are just some, some resources that I, that I found real quickly. Uh, Sweet Adelines already has out on their website a liability waiver and a health questionnaire. So if you haven't discovered those, those are, those are handy. The new director resource toolkit that just came out this week is holy cow full of amazing resources that uh, to help with uh, virtual rehearsals and everything under the sun is, is in that resource. And so uh, directors have access to that. And if they haven't had a chance to, to do much digging around in there, it's, it's pretty exciting. Of course, going back to the CDC, the, one of the, the things that I would encourage is aligning any policies that you have with other kinds of um, professional organizations. For instance, the Society for Human Resource Management has some really good guidelines out there that have to do with employment situations. And so, you know, I, I know we're gonna have conversations around, can we require vaccines? Can we require masks? Can we require, you know, and so I would look to external agencies to try to get some, some thoughts about if you're gonna do that, then what does that look like? If you're not gonna do that, what does that look like? But, but look beyond um, uh, the NATS organization has been just fabulous with coming up with all kinds of resources and conversation about you know, doing what we do and the teachers of singing. And so continuing to stay in touch with the, the research that they're doing and the, the findings that they have would be really important. Um, in another life, I was in the Missouri Arts Council in, in Missouri and they have a brand new resource that they just put out called ArtSafe certification. And when I looked at it, it, it looked primarily at this moment as if they were, it was mostly museums and those kinds of places that have to get a facility up to speed. Um, but it, we can't participate because we're not in Missouri, but there's, there's an awful lot of it that you can see online right now that would give you some thoughts about preparing a rehearsal hall. Uh, and then eventually, how do we handle our publics? If we, if we do a concert indoors, then what are some things that we might want to be considering as we plan for that? And uh, it's super well done. You can get to a lot of stuff without having to log into the Missouri Arts Council. Um, and then of course our state and local health jurisdictions. And, and again, you know, going to our rehearsal hall, whoever owns that and saying, what are, what are your policies? What, what do you expect from us? It's kind of hard to remember that we have those rehearsal halls. So make sure to go back and, and say, what, what's up with you guys? What, what's your expectation? All right, 
Here we go. I'm gonna stop sharing again. Here's the question. What did you learn today? We're a pretty kick-ass region. Truth. Truth. Uh, I am, it's funny that this happened when it did because I'm gonna be brutally honest with you here and I think you will understand where I'm coming from. The motivation for continuing on with this kind of situation is very challenging because we're not used to not being together. We're not used to not singing together. And in the last couple of weeks, I've experienced um, a real challenge with motivating myself to do things. Uh, just anything, not just this, but uh, because the pandemic gets to you after a while and, and I don't see my grandchildren. And so this came about at a really good time for me. And so I want to thank you for doing this because it really did help. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learned today. Excellent. I learned that we, we need each other. I could have never in a million years could I thought of all of these points of concern and ideas to not let slip through the cracks. We need each other. This was great. I feel like there's such a depth of knowledge and willingness to share that I think I kind of knew it was there, but I, I'm just reminded once again, the wonderful resources we have in each other. And um, I agree with you, Chris, the, the depth of knowledge, the suggestions, I never could have gotten this by myself. Thank you. I think really thinking about the fact that we are not going to be the same. I love the, the first thing you said, we're not going back, we're moving forward. And I think that is something to, I want to be able to share with my chorus and get everybody in that place. Uh, I think that we all need to be re realizing that we're not going back to how it was. I'm encouraged by that everybody <laughs> is on the same page as I am and that I'm not an island and uh, we're all going through the same thing. And I, I really hope that this little boost of energy here continues on and that we really do continue to collaborate with each other to be successful because it really is about the choruses. It's not about it's, it's about our people. It's about, it's about them and taking care of them. So I really hope that we all just continue to be collaborative and finding ways to, to make this transition not be seamless, but be, be easier. So. I'm really pleased to learn that <clears throat> All of our choruses are focusing on the care and nurturing of their membership and the relationships um, among the members. Because if we get, you know, if we finish up with this pandemic and we haven't kept ourselves close to each other, it won't um, make making the music be tight and good too. That just the relationships between each member of the chorus and the choruses um, affects not only us and our hearts, but also the, the protection, the production of our music. So I'm glad to see we're all doing that. I agree with Sherry. My, uh, my heart is just filled up today. And it's been, um, for me, it's been really amazing to hear different perspectives and hear people share ideas that I'm like, wow, I, I hadn't thought of that, but that's such a great idea. And my hand is tired from writing. Um, I mean, I know you're going to send out the notes, Leslie, but I, I have to write because I'm a baritone and that's what we do. Um, but I, I also really am enjoying kind of getting to know a little bit about each person's personality. So it's not just a name on an email chain. Like when I see that name, I can see their little two inch square and hear their voice in the breakout rooms. And I've just really enjoyed that today. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, it's just re-energized me. It, it's kind of 
good to get a confirmation of some things I'm doing are right and working, but it's given me so many more new little ideas that I personally, uh, along with a companion um, in course, um, that we can do more and hopefully have a positive effect because it comes right back to us. So it's really very selfish too. So I, I thank you for, for all coming and sharing what you had. Sue? I just want to thank Leslie for collecting all this stuff and bringing, making some sense out of it so that we can uh, use this going forward because it's, it's so helpful. Sometimes it's overwhelming to think about all these different things, but if you can have some kind of a focus, uh, it helps bring it together and then that'll help us all move forward. So thank you for doing this, Leslie. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Yes. I want to make sure I get everybody an opportunity to talk. We, we're we're going to finish early, which is also one of my my laws. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so uh, um. this, this is Deborah. I'd, I'd like to echo Sue's comments. Thank you, Leslie. It's been a wonderful day. For me, what it has done is a lot of confirmation that we are headed in the right direction. I mean, your emphasis on collaboration and listening and hearing uh, and being responsive to um, the hopes and dreams and needs, what's gonna make it compelling for our, our chorus. Uh, it was just so spot on. And the importance of doing thoughtful planning and visioning for the future was absolutely absolutely spot on and coupled with the caution around ensuring that we do it gently with love and flexibility. And it was that whole combination of things today that I think um, is really the, the best learning for us. So thank you. Thank you, Deborah. You are clearly a very, very special region, um, and 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 I and I knew that, you know. But you know, this is a lot of fun for us too. I, now I have all this many more friends, and so which is really, really fun. And I, I believe that we're going to be just fine, and I, I believe we're actually going to thrive from this. And if if you haven't felt the energy and the intelligence around you today. <laughs> I don't know, you were under a bigger rock than I was. Um, there, everybody who's here wants to help it be better for everybody else who's here. And so I, I have a real sense that um, we need to make sure that we continue to reach out and say, you know, you, you were impressive to me. How, how, can, how can you help me? <laughs> I need your help. Uh, I, or we, we talked about this in one of the small groups. This you know, one course is having great success with something and somebody else didn't have that much success. So reach out and say, what did you do? Can you help us with this? Can, can We'd like to do that. We'd like to be better at that. And so these relationships that you have, that you've worked, you've worked really, really hard, all of you, for many, many months. And so uh, my shout out goes to your RMT, to your leadership and to the course leadership. Uh, Holy cow, we, well, the wealth in this organization is endless. And so the opportunities are equally endless. And so unless there's some big thing, Paula, did you wanna say something else? Um, I would just like to say one little thing. First of all, if we could just visually somehow show Leslie how much we appreciate her being here. Yay. Um, and sharing your wisdom and caring and also empowering us to realize that we're in this together and we're, none of us have to row the boat alone. So um, in that same spirit, the, you may or may not know, but um, the region, I, I'm the leadership development specialist, but we have a task force Two, and that includes um, Cheryl Allen, Deborah Angst, Peggy Benton, Nancy Kurth, and myself. And we are going to be contacting you in the next couple of weeks 
to see if we, you know, what your region might be able to do for you, what you're thinking about, or there are things that we can do to help. Um, so again, I hope that not only do you get that feeling right now, but you go away continuing to know that you're not alone. And all of the challenges that you face, everybody else faces, and we can all figure it out together. And we wanna help if we can. So it, expect that um, email from us and we'll be happy at some point to Zoom with you or your entire course management team or whatever, if we can help do stuff like that. So thank you so much for your attendance today. And just go away knowing how invaluable you are, not only to this region, but to all of the people that you touch because you do what you do. Thank you for being you and thanks for being here. Thanks, Paula. Thanks, Paula. Well, Region 13, what a great day this has been, okay? This is a great kickoff to a weekend. By the way, it is a weekend and some of us are, you know, that, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I, I really enjoyed my time. Uh, there's, they have my contact information. If there's something that I need to, to reiterate or clarify, or you think that I could do better, I would really appreciate it. Speaking of, I am gonna send uh, a faculty evaluation to the region and ask them to forward it on to you. Uh, I really wanna know, I, I need feedback. I wanna know what went well, what could have gone better. That's super important to me as a teacher. So meanwhile, um, love you all. Appreciate your being here today. I can't wait for this giant hug day that we're gonna have. Don't know where it's gonna be, but it's gonna be soon. I'm just believing, okay? <laughs> all right, so save your Zoom money so that we can get together, all right? Have a great day, everybody.